In the present video, I will be explaining a hypothesis test for the mean using the p-value approach. Sigma is unknown in this problem, as it usually happens in real life, and this will be a two-tailed test. The problem say like this. According to a study carried out 10 years ago, the average wireless phone users earn $32,000 per hundred dollars per year. Suppose a researcher believe that the average annual earnings of the wireless phone users are different now and he set up a study in an attempt to prove this, his theory. He randomly samples 18 wireless phone users and finds out that the average annual salary for this sample is 30,900 and the sample standard deviation is 3,600. Use a level of significance of 0.10% to test the researcher's theory. Assume wages in this industry are normally distributed. We are going to check if the average earnings for a wireless phone users is different now. So the researchers believe that this average is different than, the, than it used to be, $32,400. So there is here one hypothesis. The hypothesis says that the mean is now different than $32,400 because this hypothesis doesn't have an equal sign. We have actually no equal. Then this is the alternative hypothesis. The opposite to this will be the one with the equal signs that will be the null hypothesis. So, and this hypothesis, the alternative hypothesis, is the research hypothesis. So the null hypothesis is obviously the opposite of this, mu equals 32,400. And because we are going to use the p-value approach, so we are going to use immediately the t-test statistic. Because we know, we don't, we doesn't know the population standard deviation. Actually, we know the sample standard deviation, so we compute this from a sample. So, in this case, we know that the test statistics will be a t-value. This will be a t-test statistics. So, let's compute the test statistics, and, let's, and the formula of the t-value for the test statistics is t equal the mean minus the population mean, so the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the standard deviation over the square root of n, the sample size. So in this case, we have all this data. So we have computed already the sample mean. Actually, the problem told me that the sample mean is 30,900. Let's take note of this result, 30,900. The standard deviation is 3,600, so this is another data we have, and we are going to need it in the formula. So the standard deviation is 3,600, and n, the sample size, is 18 wireless from users, so n equal 18. So we have all the data that we need for computing the t statistics. So we make a substitution of all this data, so x bar is 30,900, this mean will be, this population mean will be the data in the null hypothesis that we are going to consider as true. So we, as we are assuming that the null hypothesis is true. We are going to use that mu is 32,400 and the standard deviation, the sample standard deviation is 3,600. Equal 18. So let's make a substitution. We use a calculator for computing this number 30,900 minus 32,400 divided by 3,600 over 18, and this equal to negative 1.768. This is the value of the t distribution. So this is the value, this is the t value. Now we are going to compute the p-value. We know that this is a t-distribution, that this is a value of a t-distribution with n minus 1 degrees of freedom. Because n equal 18, 
then the number of the, the degree of freedom n minus 1 is 17 so we are going to use a t distribution with 17 degree degree of freedom remember the t distribution is similar to the normal distribution so now we remember that the p value is the smallest value of alpha needed to reject the null hypothesis is this where the value of t because this is a two-tailed test and we know that it's a two-tailed test because the alternative hypothesis says is not equal to so this is a not equal alternative hypothesis if that is the case it's a two-tailed test because being not equal means that could be less than a number or could be greater than a number in this case the t value is negative 1.76a is negative so zero is in the middle remember in the t distribution so they will be negative 1.76a the opposite of t will be negative t that in this case negative minus t will be a positive number so it will be at the other side of the distribution negative t will be 1.760a so we have two t values negative 1.76a and positive 1.76a if alpha is this area the area that is in white here we are going to reject the null hypothesis so actually whatever area bigger than this will be enough for rejecting the null hypothesis because in this case the value negative 1.76a will be in the rejection area so this area here will be the area needed to reject the minimum area the smallest area needed to reject the null hypothesis so this area will be the p value so any time that we have a two-tailed test we are going to compute the area to the left or to the right of the t value we computed and multiply by two because there will be two areas that complete the p value so the p value is the smallest alpha needed to reject a zero will be this area to the left of negative 1.768 multiplied by two so anytime that we have a two-tailed test we multiply the area by two if the number were positive for example if the value of t were positive anyway we need to take into account the other side because the alternative hypothesis have a no equal signs so this is a two-tailed test let's find this area and multiply by two this will be a way to solve this problem so let's take a cell and in a cell in whatever cell of excel let's open excel and in whatever cell of a cell type equal t distribution and you will need to type the value of t you will need to type the degrees of freedom that in this case is 17 and you also need to type if this is a cumulative distribution let's type it here in a1 so it will be t distribution negative 1 point 768 17 is the degree of freedom and one because this is a cumulative distribution so everything that is below than this number another way to type this you can type instead of one you can type true if you type true excel understand that this is a cumulative t distribution another way if using the t distribution to tail typing the positive number if you type t distribution dot two t two tails in a cell and type the positive number and the degrees of freedom excel is going to give you the area in the two tails so in this case we are just getting the area to the left of negative 1.768 just press enter and if you press enter you get the value in itself 0 0.0475 so that will be this area to the left of t to the left of negative 1.768 so the p value 
will be two times this area. So it will be two times 0 0.0475. So the p-value is 0 0.095. What is this p-value, 0 0.095? This, the, these two areas, this part here and this part here. So the p-value, 0 0.095, will be taking into account these two areas. That is in the case if we have a two-tailed test. Okay, now that we have the p-value, we can take a decision. If the p-value is smaller than alpha, if the p-value is smaller than the level of significance, we can reject the null hypothesis. And in this case, that is the case. P-value is 0 0.095 and alpha is 0 0.10. So we can get a conclusion. Because the p-value is smaller than alpha, then we reject this null hypothesis. So we can, we can reject the null hypothesis if our level of significance is 0 0.10. So as a level of significance of 0 0.10, we reject the null hypothesis. And that concludes the explanation of this problem. Anytime that we want to use the p-value approach to make a test statistics, compute further test statistics, the t-value, and then find the p-value. If the, the p-value will be always the smallest alpha needed to reject A0. If this is a one-tailed test, will be just the area to the right of the t-value or to the left if the t-test is a left-tailed test, or that area multiplied by 2 if this is a two-tailed test. Okay, I hope you have found this useful. Thank you.